Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cecilia Campillo. I represent the El Pueblo Clinic's TCE program, which is located at 101 West Irvington Road. In the series of programs, uh, we've been bringing to you information on TCE, um, the industrial solvent that uh, harmed the waters, uh, seeped into the aquifer and came into the homes on the south side. People are claiming their health was impacted, and the clinic is running a program to address these spe uh, specific issues. Um, as usual, we have guests on our show, and today we have two guests, very special guests, uh, representing the city, Mr. Steve Leal from Ward 5, and former city councilman, uh, Mr. Bruce Wheeler, and I welcome both of you, and thank you for being here. Glad to be here, Cecilia. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. So, um, as you know, um, you gentlemen have been in the forefront of all the necessary things that were put in place with regards to uh, containing the issue on TCE. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to hear from you a little bit of the history that uh, both of you have gone through. And we're, we're going to share a dialogue here between mm -hmm. Bruce and, and yourself, Steve, and myself. And I'd like to start with you first, Steve, and give us a little history on TCE sure. and all the issues. Well, clearly, uh, it's an enormous issue. It has a number of aspects. Each one of the aspects is a, almost a world unto itself. Uh, ten years ago, when, when I was first elected uh, to represent the South Side, one of the issues that was there on, on the table to deal with was the issue of uh, groundwater pollution, Mm -hmm. and the long-standing unmet needs. Uh, one of the one person that I knew uh, uh, and given me some federal literature, actually there were copies of uh, uh, federal legislation mm -hmm. that inferred that there may be federal resources available. And so I sent uh, a letter to the city asking us to investigate that because if there were resources that could be brought into the south side that could address some aspect mm -hmm. uh, or more than one aspect of this problem it seemed to me that we should we should absolutely pursue that um, that was not uh, met with uh, with much of a welcome mm -hmm. um, some staff members uh, actually wrote back and said that uh, there were the problems on the south side had nothing to do with the, uh, the water issue that it was a result of culture, diet, uh, people not wearing seat belts, and smoking, mm -hmm. which uh, some of us thought was, um, aside from uncharitable, bordered on the kind of environmental racism that we had all seen and experienced for some time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, we did, subsequent to that, the city, to its credit, mm -hmm. did investigate uh, those questions. Um, later that that same year, uh, it struck me that I should put a block grant proposal together mm -hmm. as maybe one of the ways to try and get resources to uh, expand the clinic that existed at El Pueblo yes. to make it more than just a general type clinic, but to augment that clinic so that it could have a, a particular and special dimension to it that could deal with the issue of TCE. Mm -hmm. and uh, had the idea about two nights before the deadline for submittal. Mm -hmm. um, I came down to your house, and uh, yourself, I, your husband, Abe, mm -hmm. wrote the proposal on your, on your kitchen table that night. I remember we that We submitted well. it two mm -hmm. days later. Uh, thanks to the, the council supported it. Bruce was, was helpful yes. in that. Yes. And we got the money to do a quarter of a million dollar expansion. The, 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 the clinic was so stressed anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a closet that mm -hmm. had 12,000 people in it. I mean, it, it was too small. It really needed to be expanded anyway. Yes. That's all been done. Mm -hmm. It's been expanded yet again. This year. And mm -hmm. um, it's providing the kind of support that folks have needed for a long time. Yes, and, and uh, that's much appreciated by mm -hmm. everyone that works in the clinic and all the patients that come to our clinic because there's much more room, as you say, for better service right. to our clients. Right. And the component that was added uh, as the part of the TCE program to an existing clinic that was there, a facility that's been there for about 20 plus more years, mm -hmm. 25 plus years, 
um, has been a, a, of great value to the residents uh, that um, utilize the clinic. So we're, we thank you here mm -hmm. uh, uh, once more to you, Stephen, to you, uh, Bruce, for all the help and the support that you've uh, ever given that, uh, that clinic. Well, the South Side um, is the only part of Tucson mm -hmm. that was both a medical manpower shortage area and an economic shortage area simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Other parts of town were one or the other, mm -hmm. but the South Side was the only part of Tucson that was both. Mm -hmm. It had, uh, and still does have, sig very significant needs. Mm -hmm. The health care, the health fair we put on at El Pueblo, we have done for, I want to say, four or five years At now. least five years. Um, mm -hmm. Other health fairs have 100 people come. We have 600 people come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a statement about the level of need that exists. Absolutely, and it continues right. throughout the years as our as our South Side grows. And um, Mr. Wheeler, Bruce, uh, what can you tell us a little bit of history of how you got involved? And as I understand, you're one of the um, original uh, founders of T Tucsonans for a Clean Environment. I didn't know that. Can you tell us a little bit about that history? That was a long time ago in, in the. Mm -hmm. You know, listening to you and Steve talk about this issue, I think of the 14 years that I've been involved in the issue, and mm -hmm. I think, my gosh, again, thanks to you and Abe and Steve and other people that have worked really hard mm -hmm. in the grassroots like you and politically like Steve, we've come a very, very long way. But mm -hmm. I remember in 1985, like most people that were outside of the affected area, first hearing about it through articles by Jane Kay who was a very valiant, courageous uh, reporter for the Arizona yeah. Daily Star. That was in the days when, when the Star was a very good investigative uh, newspaper. Mm -hmm. And at first, her reports were, were received with uh, much, much skepticism. And I remember attending a first meeting. I was not in office. And city officials were denying that there was any contamination, that there was any problem, uh, that whatever levels of TCE were below any dangerous levels. And that response on the part of the very people who are supposed to guarantee our safety prompted me in large part to run for the city council in 1987. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was, we couldn't have done it without grassroots, without you, without the people that unfortunately were hurt so terribly by it. Mm -hmm. but, but in the long run, it has a success story. There's a yeah. clinic, mm -hmm. there's an awareness, there's mm -hmm. uh, finally recognition Mm -hmm. and uh, remediation on the part of the parties that were responsible and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of work by those that, that pooled together. So mm -hmm. it's been um, 14 long years of a very, years. very valiant struggle on the part of many mm -hmm. people. And you, you might say we've come uh, a long way, and yet, Steve, uh, we have quite a ways to go with sure. regards to this issue. <coughs> uh, what do you foresee uh, as uh, something that is still much needed um, well, the one of the, I think there's, there's certainly a couple things. One of them that comes to mind is I have concerns about the length of time it will take to complete the cleanup. Mm -hmm. I think that um, folks having to live with that sort of veil mm -hmm. over their lives, mm -hmm. even though the water they're getting, there is not a problem with it with regard to TC, mm -hmm. but just the fact that I think there's a kind of a, a psychological mm -hmm. burden that comes from, from dwelling mm -hmm. for such an extended period of time within mm -hmm. a Superfund site. Um, three or four months ago, I saw a program on the Discovery Channel that was uh, a, an examination of some te te technology that is a, uh, a way to modify pump and treat, mm -hmm. where they actually uh, take steam and inject it into the ground and it, and it dramatically hastens the rate at which stuff comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, they did, I think it was around San Francisco they did one, where instead of taking 30 years, it took three years. Mm -hmm. And so I've, um, matter of fact, I, just last week, some consultants came from, the fir from that firm. Mm -hmm. I'd asked city staff to set up a meeting, got the videotapes, we all had presentations, to examine whether that that technique uh, is usable mm -hmm. for our particular issue. Right. It, it isn't for all. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, I think we, it's incumbent upon us. Mm -hmm. If something like that exists and it will work here and 
take care of the problem in, 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 in a lot less time, mm -hmm. we need to do it. That's, quite, that's great. And as you know, the Air Force and uh, Raytheon, Hughes, has been taking part in some of the cleanup. Mm -hmm. Now, is this technology that you're speaking of, um, it sounds like a little bit different than what they're currently using? It would be done in conjunction with what, oh, I as I understand it, mm -hmm. it's something you would just add on to what they're doing. I see. And uh, it would shorten just all happen to shorten the time. Shorten the time. That's, that's very good I'm going to be putting it on the agenda for the mayor and council because mm -hmm. I want the council to see mm -hmm. the presentation. And what area of, of uh, what area of the contamination plume is that technology going to be used? Or well, we we don't know whether don't know. it needs to be determined that it actually makes sense for this particular problem. I see. Mm -hmm. So you'll probably be doing some pilot testing before you put it to great use if it's approved, of right. course. Uh huh. That's great. The state-of-the-art technology issue has always been at the forefront of the council's right. efforts. I remember right. you do the uh, the effort to put, at the time that we put the filters in, the air filtration system, that mm -hmm. the that we use carbon filters, and right. it co I remember the arguments against it, that it cost more, that it hadn't been tried extensively mm -hmm. enough, but we persevered, mm -hmm. and it was put in, and at mm -hmm. that time, that was state-of-the-art, so it's it's refreshing to hear that that we're still, as we, as we continue the process of cleanup, that we stay up pushing the envelope toward that, uh, that level of technology. And those, and those filters that you're talking about turned out to get full quicker than anyone even imagined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you used the word courageous a while back, and it does take a lot of courage to kind of step into these dimensions that have never been explored. And I think the city needs to be commended for being in the forefront of all these uh, courageous steps mm -hmm. that are being taken. So it wasn't um, always that way, though. It wasn't you, always. As you, as Tell you, us as about we that, all Bruce. Know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I mentioned earlier, it was very disheartening to be at a public meeting in the mm -hmm. South Side mm -hmm. after after the series of articles and after people complaining of and having mm -hmm. become sick with mm -hmm. cancer and for the city to say that there was no problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was extremely disheartening. So I won't say any more other than the fact that we've gone from there to here right. and it's still, it's still proceeding. Right. But, but there was a period when it was, I don't see, I don't hear, and I won't tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, if, if we had let them go, if people like you and Rose Augustine and Myra Absolutely. Jones Myra and Jones. Yes. Margaret Chumbler and others had, had not pushed the issue, Mm -hmm. Well, who knows how bad And in it fact, be. I was just going to mention uh, Rose and uh, Myra being there in the forefront of, of uh, also the community side, just never letting go of this issue and, and educating us, really, educating the community oh, if they, and uh, making us aware of the problem. I would, I would say that if, if anyone really educated me in a kind of a thoughtful, complete way, it was mm -hmm. both of them. Absolutely. That I knew parts of things. Mm -hmm. But they really filled in the gaps mm -hmm. and helped help me understand this far better than I ever did. Yes. One of the one of the real positive aspects of this also, you always have to look for for you know what do we learn from our tragedies locally and and in this case, uh, I think one of the valuable lessons and experiences was the empowerment of the South Side mm -hmm. because prior to that there was a feeling of uh, dismemberment from the rest of the community, mm -hmm. financial resources going to the areas that were in, in growth development stages and the mm -hmm. south side was just stagnant mm -hmm. and um, you know because of people like again the, yeah, the political courage we've seen on the city council and and again the barrio and the neighborhoods right. we've that has been reclaimed and now that is a vibrant vibrant right. community i drove by quincy uh, douglas center today and i and i thought of you yeah and you know i know it took seven people and it took the community but i thought you know these are the changes from yeah. those times mm -hmm. when there was not that sense of empowerment. And empowerment is critical mm -hmm. to people taking their own destiny in their own hands. And of hands. course, the leadership that we've had, you know, with people that care about the areas uh, that they're representing at the time, um, I know that a lot of things have happened uh, to make it a lot better for the South Side people, uh, residents like myself. When you uh, drive and you see buildings and you see uh, community development coming right. up, more economic development that's much needed on the south side, you know that um, again the city has taken a very giant step, a major giant step in. And now one of the city's very own, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Gutierrez mm -hmm. is a city mm -hmm. manager, so 
all those things are positive developments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and talking about you going back, now we're going back uh, about environmental racism. You know, uh, we've always heard that, and in, in by the same token, we have experienced that on the South Side. But because of the empowerment of people, we have almost done a proactive uh, step in in changing. Mm -hmm. Do, would you agree? Would you gentlemen agree, Steve? Uh, Bruce? I, yeah, I, I do agree with that. I think that, uh, I mean, uh, part of why I say that is in the, when I came into office, there were six neighborhood associations in the South Side. Mm -hmm. uh, we've helped organize 16 other ones to where now there's 22. Mm -hmm. They all together, the, pr the presidents of all those associations now meet once a month. They, they send letters out and take action on various things that have affect either the whole south side or each other. They have uh, worked with us uh, to do two major area plans, the whole mm -hmm. south 6 corridor and now the south 12. Uh, one of the issues that is, uh, we've uh, wanted to push and they agree is the issue of uh, how much industrial zoning is in the south side. Mm -hmm. And look at the proximity of it uh, to, to residential neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, and that we need a way you know the decisions that were made God 30 years ago that s that set that up now we live with the consequences of it and we need to figure out how to soften that yeah. uh, because uh, the south side residents shouldn't have to live with that much industrial zoning and also because <coughs> would you agree that it's because uh, at, at one point in time, we won't have anywhere else to go but south, south uh, that's into large, the city. That's large. Uh, there's truth in that. And mm. so the growth will naturally have to be not only industrial but other commercial and and other positive things that. Right. Will, what do you think of that? Uh, would you agree? Absolutely, and I think. Um, you know, we've, we've seen a reallocation of, the, of those resources, the empowerment we were talking about. Um, I can't think of what Steve was saying without thinking of people like Manny Herrera, too. Right. There is nothing is going to happen right. in, in those areas of town now without, without the consent and participation right. of the residents, mm -hmm. in part because of all these struggles. Mm -hmm. um, the environmental racism I issue is very interesting, and yes, it exists. But it's important to know historically that when the contamination began, actually began, at the end of World War II, that the South Side was actually far, had a far greater Anglo population. And so it really shows mm -hmm. how its uh, pollution uh, of the environment is non-discriminatory. Mm -hmm. But where it's applicable to say that racist, uh, racial um, uh, environmentalism was found, that we had to confront it, was that by the time it became an issue 14 years ago, the inhabitants were largely Hispanic mm -hmm. and their political power had been diluted. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, mm -hmm. if you don't claim and reclaim your political power that's granted to you by your rights, you lose it and right. people will walk all over you. And that's what was happening due to those reasons mm -hmm. and that's changed a lot. You know, I, I had lunch with uh, some folks a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about housing and uh, talking about community reinvestment on the part of banks, you know, and was there redlining going on in certain parts of Tucson. And these folks told me something that I had never, that I had heard before, but not as coherently as they laid it out. Um, and that is that people who qualify for a loan only to have the loan go away and the bank not be able to give them the loan because they couldn't find anyone to give them a homeowner's policy, that the insurance companies were redlining the area. Mm. And I'd never heard of as convincingly that that could be taking place. And that's going to be something I'm going to ask the city mm -hmm. to investigate. Good, good for you, Steve. Because that, that's a kind of environmental racism, too. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, remember during the uh, high point of the TCE issue, they were redlining, the banks were redlining properties That's on right. the south side because of the issue of TCE and... Stigma. And uh, so therefore they figured, well, their properties are 
worth less than in other parts of the country because of nobody's going to want to buy uh, within that TCE area. So the banks weren't lending money. And that happened in our family. We were denied a loan because of the area we live. One of the ways that we succeeded in combating that, you remember, is um, we, we right. passed the uh, Community Reinvestment, Reinvestment right. Act, mm -hmm. which uh, I heard about way back probably my first year in office. And that said that, OK, banks, insurance companies, if, if you want the city to deposit our funds, which are quite substantial mm -hmm. throughout the course of a year as we, as we collect and hold on to the money before we spend it, mm -hmm. then you better not make these practices, mm -hmm. uh, allow these practices to continue. Right. So we broke the back of, well, we broke the back, but it still exists, and it's still an issue. It's like TCE. The back was broken of the main problem, mm -hmm. and it's being worked on, but that's the progress that's being made. Do you think the UCAB, uh, you're familiar, of course, with the UCAB. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that, um, well, actually, let's go back a little bit uh, with the TC subcommittee. Because the TC subcommittee was uh, instrumental in right. bringing governments together. Right. That included city, county, state, county, state, uh, <laughs> federal, right. to the table with um, community to dialogue. And that was the beginning of some good conversation mm -hmm. between the responsible parties uh, regarding TCE and the community. And pushing for the registry. And push, yeah. pushing for the registry. registry. Tell us a little bit about the subcommittee, Steve. I remember you being uh, there, along with, with right. Bruce and Raul Grijalva, right. Lorraine Lee. All of, us, mm -hmm. all of us really understood that it was crucial to have a, re a, a registry mm -hmm. and that to be housed mm -hmm. at the clinic. And the clinic basically be a vehicle that not only helped people, but as mm -hmm. it helped people, it helped then create through the data mm -hmm. a registry that would then give the EPA and everyone else insight mm -hmm. into the kinds of problems that were there and the kinds of then uh, resources that would need to be brought in. And uh, it was gratifying to see mm -hmm. everybody in a very community-oriented way mm -hmm. uh, come together. And, and even uh, the EPA, for that matter, at that time, mm -hmm was uh, a partner. Right. Well, we, we had wonderful leadership uh, at that time because right after the TCE subcommittee came the Health Advisory Board mm -hmm. that supports the, cl the clinics, mm -hmm. the TCE program stay in focus uh, with a mission of, of addressing uh, the health care for people that were exposed. And then later on came the UCAB, uh, the Unified Community Advisory Board, uh, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, so, want to um, ex expound on that a little bit? Um, well, or do you want to? I think Steve, Steve is doing. He's doing a better job. He he knows all the up-to-date parts. I've been yeah. out of the loop for four years now. It's really just the, get back. Uh, <laughs> the more recent child in the family, of mm -hmm. uh, or the descendant in that line of committees, mm -hmm. that's helped monitor and uh, and and maintain oversight mm -hmm. on the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in some ways really hard work because um, it's quieted down. Yes. And so now it's the yeoman, what's sort of the yeoman's work mm -hmm. of sticking with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've always had a, both a sense of relief and respect for the folks that have uh, taken that cause up and, and stuck with the committee mm -hmm. and maintained it. The uh, diehards, you might say. The, as, as we <laughs> refer to diehards, yes, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, we do, uh, you know, one thing that I've gotten from the UCAB is an education because, and I believe that on the other side, the PRPs have gotten educated by the community as to what our needs are, what our wants are, and uh, the fact that we're not letting go of, of this issue very mm -hmm. easily if they try to change something that's uh, very, um, without community input. So uh, I believe that we've benefited a lot, both the UK, both the community and the responsible parties. Mm -hmm. That's been a good, uh, mm -hmm. a good two-way street there, you might say, with respect for one another, without uh, really uh, going in and patronizing one another, but working together and knowing where that, um, where that uh, respect lies. Correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can think of a couple times when um, 
some of the entities thought the committees were asleep mm -hmm. or didn't care. Yeah. And, uh, and were very surprised when uh, all of a sudden there was a lot of folks at their door taking a bite out of them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And still today, you know, just recently, there's a, a bit of a change in the wind where the PRPs are concerned. And that's for another program that we're going to talk about, uh, that um, issue where the Air Force is, um, mm -hmm. is trying to buy out of, mm -hmm. of their responsibility. But um, because we're not clear on some of the information yet, we, we want to wait to do a, another discussion mm -hmm. with uh, on another program. That's an important discussion. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm real glad you want to do that. And I hope you can come back and participate Absolutely. in it. And, and Bruce, um, you are also invited to come back. Absolutely. And, um, our, our continuing uh, programs will uh, involve more people from the community, uh, people that have been there in the forefront on this issue of TCE. Our health clinic, as you know, continues to help the patients that come in claiming their health has been uh, impacted because of the water issue and we are giving them their doctor's care, their uh, prescription care, their specialty clinics care. We have, have 800 plus patients. We're in our fifth year and uh, we hope to be there for many years to come. Mm -hmm. We thank both of you for all the support that you've ever given El Pueblo TCE program, the clinic uh, it, 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 as a whole and um, I think we need to thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, for sure. Mm -hmm. And we, we'll all be, as long as we work together, I think we can really give Tucson a lot of uh, positive. Mm -hmm. And thanks again, Steve, and thank you, Bruce, for thank being you, here Cecilia. today. And we'll be back next week with another series of programs on the TCE and the El Pueblo Health uh, Center at El Pueblo Neighborhood at 101 West Irvington. Thank you for being here today.